Hello, beautiful soul family. How are you? Before I get into today's video, which is all about the full moon in Leo, I just wanted to make a quick, exciting announcement. I am teaching Reiki 1 and Reiki 2 again this year. I'm teaching Reiki 1 the weekend of March 5th and 6th. So it's a little bit less than a month away and then Reiki to the first weekend of April. I will link all of the information down in the show notes. Um, for those of you who are new to my side of YouTube and the internet, I am a Reiki master teacher. I also have my master's in psychology. I'm a Kundalini yoga teacher and I'm a seeker. I'm always learning and unlearning and my my mission here on earth is to help us um, integrate our spiritual understanding with our human experience to truly find what our souls are meant to do in this lifetime, our soul print, as I like to call it, or star print. And I use the modalities of astrology and also channeling and um working with my spirit guides and my ancestors more specifically. But I'm just so glad that you're here because I love doing these. I am attuned to the moon, my north node is in Cancer, and I have a lot of just information and knowledge and wisdom that I wanna share, and I don't always get to share it in longer formats on Instagram and TikTok, which is why I started doing these YouTube um, videos. And, um, and so here I am. So today is Sunday, February 13th, and I wanted to do this today. Um, I wanted to start filming this today at least because the last, the last moon video that I did, it took me three days to film all the groups because I don't know, I just, there was so much energy and I needed time in between. So I didn't really get to like set up my, you know, situation here. So I'm going to do it as I talk. Um, so you can't see my desk, but I have like a bunch of crystals on my desk right now. And I'm just lighting a candle to invoke the element of the fire, which I always do. Um, and also Leo is a fixed fire sign and it's happening on February 16th at 11 around 11 a.m. Eastern time and the moon will be at 27 degrees of Leo and the sun will be at 27 degrees of Aquarius we're still in Aquarius season and I just find it interesting that on the same day Venus will be conjunct Mars in Capricorn and the full moon will be squaring the nodes of fate. The next day on the 17th, Jupiter will be sextile Uranus. And then on the 18th, the sun will move into Pisces. And I said this in the last video, which was on the new moon in Aquarius, um, which was also the lunar new year, that I just felt really, really significant energy changes and shifts. So let me know if you felt that as well or if you're feeling that now. But I just feel like things are moving forward. I mean, things are always moving forward. The only thing guaranteed is change and evolution. But I really feel the energy shift a lot, like in these last two, in these last two um, weeks since the new moon. And the main question that came in my mind I was, as I was tuning into this full moon was, are you the main character of your story? So Leo, as you maybe, maybe some of you don't know, Leo is ruled by the sun. And so the sun only has one ruler, which is Leo. And the sun in our, in our personal charts, it really shows us the archetype that our soul wanted to come into this incarnation with, like our out, outward life force energy. So for example, I'm a sun in Aries in my fifth house. So how I want, how my soul wants to express itself is a cardinal fire sign, which is somebody who takes action, somebody who takes initiative, somebody who is a leader in some way. And it really does line up with a lot of the other systems that I've learned from, like human design, gene keys, Chinese astrology, and Vedic astrology. So it's also interesting 
to study all different modalities to see like the main theme of like what your soul wants to express itself. And being in the fifth house, it's all about, um, you know, being, I guess, like being my own boss because it's the house of um, your own business, entrepreneurship, but also like tuning into my inner child, working with children. There's like other themes about the fifth house, but just knowing that I know how my son, how I want to express myself. And so this full moon being in the sign of Leo is, are you the main character of your story? And because it's squaring the nodes of fate, I believe the nodes of fate really help us to align with our soul's calling, our soul's, um, where our soul wants to lead us. And every time it switches, every 18 months, it switches into a different energy and a different sign. So the last 18 months, it was Gemini and Sagittarius. And where, wherever those nodes were passing through the specific house was like that lesson for you, um, that calling, that mystery school, right? You were called to understand Gemini and Sagittarius energy. If you didn't have those energies natally in your chart, this was a time when you were, you know, um, when you were being called to call in those energies. Um, me specifically, I don't have many um, personal planets in Taurus. I have Chiron there and in Scorpio, I have Jupiter, but like those are energies that I'm not, I don't have personal planets around. So I'm interested to see, um, and I can go back to 18, 19 years ago when the nodes were there um, to remember back like the lessons, but it's, it's, it's a time for me personally to really work with Taurus and Scorpio energy and almost like go into that mystery school that that learn that learning that lesson that um, these nodes are calling for in order for me to understand like the alignment of where my soul wants to take me if you have your north node in taurus and and your south node in scorpio this is like a return of those lessons um back into like where you were born and oftentimes it can be it can be challenging only because these are like magnetic vortices where I find you attract people into your life that help you see deeper into, they like mirror back into your soul, like what it is that you are working through. And I, I don't like using good or bad because nothing is good or bad. It's just, um, you know, like challenging or easygoing relationships that help you work through certain things that you need to see within yourself. And I've learned so much with the North and South node being in Gemini and Sagittarius because there were transiting angular houses for me, the South node in my first house, as like the South node isn't just about releasing. It is, but it's more about integration i find like with anything the polarities of life is not just being in one or the other not moving all the way towards the north not releasing all of the south but being somewhere in the middle where you can integrate both lessons and um coming to a place where you can have that polarity within you because when you can hold the polarity and the duality within you, your outer reality is more balanced and more whole, if this makes sense. Um, it's hard for me to like put into words the experiences of these energies um, because it's something that is just is in my understanding and it's hard to give like words to these examples because for everybody it's going to be different and it's going to be expressed through different ways so with all that being said um with this with this full moon squaring the nodes i really feel like this is a faded time when more synchronicities and more signs will be shown to you if you choose to see them to help you realize like what it is that your soul is calling you to do because Leo also rules the heart space 
And usually when we're tapped into our heart, we know the way and we know what our soul is calling us for, calling for us to do. But sometimes in this pursuit of life, we allow other people's opinions of us and our need for acceptance for others to override what our soul and our hearts want for us, um, for our for our lives. And I'll just give you a personal example. Um, I'm at a point in my life right now where I'm turning 40 next month and I've lived enough life where I fully accept myself and I'm sure it's just going to get more and more of acceptance, right? I fully accept all of my life lessons, good and bad, hard and easy. And I've come to a place in my life where people's opinions of me don't really have weight anymore. Um, this morning, my mom was saying that, you know, like, I'm single, I'm not married, I don't have kids. And she was saying, like, a lot of our family members and a lot of our friends are, like, like in a, in a negative way, um, in a way that implies that there's something wrong with me. Like, Laura's single? Like, why isn't she, like, you know? And in their viewpoint... Yes, if they are see if they see life as their definition of success is getting married and having children and you know these like milestone markers of like what makes a life successful, then of course when they look at me under that definition, it's like something is wrong with me. But in my definition of a happy life and a successful life is living a life of freedom, living my life just being me and not living on someone else's timeline and truly having an expanded life, getting to experience life on my own terms, on my own timing and not needing to feel like that's validated by anybody else but me. And so I'm, I feel so grateful and it gives me chills to say that like we, I live in a lifetime right now because I do believe in in past lives, I am living, my soul is living in a lifetime now where I don't have to get married, I don't have to have children, I don't have to do certain things, but I get to decide where I'm living and what I'm doing. And that to me is this full moon in Leo. Like I feel like I am the main character of my story. I'm writing my story. I literally have dreamt my whole life to be able to do what I'm doing now, which is like making my own schedule, being my own boss, getting to share my wild ideas with people, traveling the world, falling in love, and like falling in love with somebody that I truly wanna be in love with, not because this person has like a level of success or perceived success or is a millionaire or like anything like that but love, but a soulmate that helps me see my soul more and I can't believe sometimes I'm like I can't believe that that probably my soul has lived through many many lifetimes when this wasn't possible and so I truly feel like I am my own main character of my own story because I dictate how it goes and how it unfolds so the question for you is are you the main character of your life are you living by your heart's desire? Are you living in alignment with your values and your morals and and truly, truly not based on societal, gender, cultural, familial expectations, but just based on you? Obviously, it has to be also um, in harmony and balance with your community and your family, but first I believe because the opposite sign of Leo is Aquarius so obviously it has to be not from like the shadow realm of Leo which is narcissism and ego but really in tune with your soul's essence Leo is a fixed fire sign and there's a fixed nature of our soul there's like a fire that burns within us that we were born with that just like cannot be sh shooken, shaken, <laughs> that has always been there. And it's our job to figure out what that is and what our soul is telling us to do and to remember why we're here. 
So my wish for everybody and why I'm here is to remind us, remind you of who you really are and what your soul wants you to do and, and also collectively break down these structures and barriers that keep us tied to these old paradigms. Because really, I believe we all have the same purpose. Because people ask me all the time, like, I want to find my purpose, I want to find my purpose. And honestly, this is like, um, maybe like, spoiler alert, but I believe we all have the same purpose, which is just, just to be, just to be ourselves and have all of the beautiful experiences, get to experience life to the fullest and just be ourselves, just be, right? Without fear of judgment, without fear of rejection and just live out life and have all of these experiences and yeah, risk getting hurt, risk getting our heart broken. That's just a part of life. But I like, this is what I envision like when I tap into this Leo full moon energy is like, living wildly like being that lion being that beautiful regal energy of like this is who I am take me or leave me so I just hope that for all of you and I wish that for all of you um and that's why I'm here is to remind you of that so I'm gonna go through the rising signs um because I love you all so much even though I don't know all of you but I'm committed to helping everybody in some way, shape, or form. So let's get to it. I'm gonna start with Aries Rising as always. So I'll see you there, bye. Hi Aries Rising, I hope you watched the beginning because the main question that I posed was, are you the main character of your story? This is all about tapping into your heart space, being true to your soul's calling, your soul's essence, and this is happening in your fifth house, which is like one of the funnest houses, funnest? One of the most fun houses um, to have, to have Leo, because Leo naturally rules the fifth house. I have my son in the fifth house. Um, this is a house of creativity, of romance, of being seen, being heard, entertainment, um, it could also be gambling, um, but it's it's really a place of like tapping into your creativity and and bringing that forth. So full moons are a full culmination of energy. So is there a realization that there is some kind of project that you want to birth, that you want to be your own boss, an entrepreneur, maybe tapping into your inner child or having a child um yeah and with venus and mars being conjunct in your 10th house um something yeah some you know venus is like i feel attracted to this i want and mars is like i can do it i can get after it so please dream big aries rising and um let's see what spirit has to say are you the main character of your own story? Most Aries placements, I would say yes. What does Aries rising have to know? Okay, so we have three cards here. We have the Temperance, which is a Sagittarius card. We have the Nine of Materials and the Fool. This is kind of what I was feeling. If if some of you have wanted to create your own business or ha like want to start like some kind of business on your own, this is your sign. Cuz the 9 of materials is Venus in Virgo. This is like being self-sufficient, being abundant, being your own generator of wealth, of money, of financial stability this full card is ruled by uranus it's a new beginning it's it's what is that saying um take a leap and the net will appear it's really it's really saying and aries are very like it's you're ruled by mars so 
you listen to your instincts, you listen to your primal energy and you take action. And temperance is saying that you have everything you need. Temperance is like the higher octave of the magician. It's like you don't actually need any of like the elements. You don't need the sword, the wand, the pentacle, the cup. You have everything you need by your direct connection to spirit. Temperance is also tempering energy. So like I often find temperance like when I see that in a reading, like you co you've come to a place where you're in alignment with something like a higher calling, a deeper, a deeper knowing within your soul, like co clear cognizant that you can't explain what it is. You can't explain with logic. You can't explain it with your left brain. It's something that you must do. It's something that you're compelled to do. And this is at 27 degrees of Leo square the nodes. So it's like faded. So watch out for the signs and synchronicities. Watch out for people around your orbit. Um, but this is a time to, if you've, if you felt like you wanted to strike out on your own with this Venus in Virgo here with the Nine of Pentacles, this is your sign. This is like very, very, if, like these three cards, like anytime I get any of these three cards, I'm like, wow, okay, spirit is with me. Spirit is like watching after me and telling me like, don't be afraid, take that risk. And some of this is like your career, like you've realized that you want to strike out on your own. You want to create your own business. You want to create something new. And this is your sign. So let me know if that resonates in what you're creating. Happy full moon, Aries Rising. Hello Taurus Rising. This full moon in Leo is happening in your fourth house of roots, family, and ancestry. So are you the main character of your story? And oftentimes when we have significant transits in our fourth house, it's a really good time to contemplate what psychological foundations and emotional um, emotional, psychological feelings do I need to feel grounded and feel rooted into myself. And you have Venus and Mars conjunct in your ninth house, which is all about, you know, um, a quest for mastery, a quest for knowledge and learning and possibly travel. So, um, So yeah, some some of you might, some of you, so it's interesting because Leo is like, I shine, right? And it's all about finding yourself and like the hero's journey of, um, of being seen. In your fourth house, which is all about family and roots, it's like, maybe some of you need to understand where your roots and your ancestry and your family came from, your lineage to give you a better understanding of like who you are. Taurus, the North Node is in your first house. So this is all about, this next 18 months is all about self. It's all about understanding who you are and how you perceive yourself. It's like the next 18 months is going to be like, it's like an energetic, wash an energetic upgrade um where 18 months from now you're going to be a totally different person and uranus is there right so finding finding more information about your roots and your family and your ancestry could give you the clues that you need um give you the clues that you need to to know yourself better and to know how you fit in with your identity. So let's ask Taurus Rising what they need to know for this full moon in Leo. Especially since this full moon is squaring um, the nodes in your first and seventh house. So 
you could be meeting a lot of people um, synchronistically to help you in this um, to help you in this quest as well. Wow. Okay, so the Nine of Pentacles came out for Aries Rising too, which I think is going to be a big theme. Um, but you have the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is always in the quest for truth, almost to the point where it seems like she doesn't have emotion, that she is a little emotionally detached. But it's only because authenticity, truth, and right perception and right mind is more important than like emotional attachments and emotional um and that's what a lot of us have to understand is that our thoughts and our emotions oftentimes aren't one in the same so this is all about finding the truth your authentic truth and who you are And crows, which are all over this card, have a psychic ability. And if there's anything that I've learned from the nodes passing through my first house is that the material, the material realm kind of becomes um, in like the background and you become more spiritually attuned. You, your spiritual gifts will turn on. And again, it's something that I can't explain um i have mercury and pisces so um it's just something that you experience that is like beyond this physical realm it's it's getting in touch with the subtle realm but again with the nine of pentacles this is venus and virgo it's about being self-sufficient it's about being it's about being abundant and it's about being completely independent of other people and having inner resources within yourself and i feel with this full moon the with it being in leo too is like are you the main character of your story can you detach from your from needing acceptance from your family from the people around you so that you can listen to your heart and listen to where the north node is leading you towards because a lot of taurus risings a lot of taurus placements with aquarius being in your 10th house so like all of the fixed sign rising signs are being asked to change which is not easy for fixed signs to do because you're fixed like it's your turn now you have to change certain things about you know as within so without within your inner realm so that you can you can live more in alignment with yourself and your authenticity. And that's something that begins within. It's something that you have to, again, with the South Node and Scorpio, you have to release a lot of these old attachments, these old things that keep you rooted in the past so that you can feel more free and feel more liberated, right? Because the Queen of Swords is like, that's... That's her number one priority is liberation, right perception, the truth. And when you do that, you become more of the nine of pentacles. Okay, Taurus Rising, I'll see you in the next moon cycle. Bye. Hi, Gemini Rising. This full moon in Leo is happening in your third house. So this is the house of learning, short distance travel, siblings, cousins, your community around you, communication, social media, uh, writing. So if you had hopes of writing, if you have hopes of, um, you know, starting a social media account or being more active on social media, or sharing or learning this is the full moon in Leo and as you know Leo as I said in the beginning is being the main character of your story and there's something here for Gemini risings about you know you've gone through 18 months of the North Node going through your first house so your quest for identity and I have no doubt that a lot of Gemini risings 
first of all, have maybe even lost a lot of friends or have new friends or your relationships have changed, you've created better boundaries, you've um, decided to, um, you know, because Geminis are like, they like to have different kinds of um, learning and they're the social butterflies of the group, but maybe in the last 18 months, you've gotten a little bit more stoic, a little bit more sensitive, a little bit more um, discerning of like who you spend your time with. So this third, your third house in Leo is like, after all of this learning and after all this integration, how can you now share that with the people around you, your community, social media, or maybe even write about it? So let's see what we have to say for Gemini Rising. Is Gemini Rising the main character of their story? Okay interesting so the first card that popped out is the seven of emotions which is a seven of cups now when i saw this pop up i was like that's sort of like what i feel like gemini is going through right now like a little bit of like i'm still like i still am not sure exactly what i want i'm still not sure like how i want to do everything but that's okay because I feel like with this full moon in Leo squaring your nodes, it's going to make a lot more sense as, as you start integrating more and more like in your being. Um, and I, I know this is hard for Gemini risings to hear, but if you just choose one thing, um, then it will, it will benefit you because, you know, I know a lot of Gemini's, and Gemini placements just like doing a lot of things and they won't go deep into one thing. So if you choose one thing and just run with it and go with it, because um, the, the Seven of Cups talks about like too many choices or a lot of choices, which can often makes us feel confused. Um, so just for example, the third house in Leo could be like, but I want to write a book. Oh, but I want to write a blog or I want to start a YouTube channel or X, Y, and Z. If you just start with one thing and really hone in on that one thing, it's going to, it's going to benefit you because it's squaring, um, the North node in your 12th house and then the South node in your sixth house. Um, and this axes in these houses are all about your work and spirituality which I find so interesting because we have the Ace of Materials, which is the Ace of Pentacles and Temperance here. Temperance, I always feel when I see this card, it came out for another group, is being guided by spirit, being guided by angels. So if you feel confused, always ask your team about it. Like what, ask where you should focus on, where, what, The quality of questions is important here because I find that when we just ask or we in anything in life, if we just ask like when we manifest and we say things like I want to manifest money, well, spirit doesn't know amount spirit can, you know, give you a dollar to that to spirit. A dollar is the same thing as a million dollars. So make sure when you are going through this process you become more and more specific about the quality of your question so ace of materials is an offering from spirit but you won't see the offer you won't see the um yeah you won't see the answer unless you can attune yourself to um what it is that you want and i think this is what this is about and I'm not judging based on stereotypes. This is just the feeling that I'm getting that um, the Seven of Cups is like you not you're not really sure, you know, and that's okay. But if you want to know, and if you want to know the direction of where to go, um, because again, this is all about like 
Leo in your third house is like main character energy of like how you want to show up. Do you want to write a book? Do you want to like be seen by others? Um, then you can ask for spirit. This is Sagittarius, which is your opposite um, sign. And this is all about like a belief, a belief in something more expanded guidance from spirit. So to sum it all up, um, attune yourself to what, what it is that you really want, like connect to your heart space, connect to your guides if you had that practice, and be more specific in what it is that you're seeking, this pentacle that you're seeking, this opportunity. Happy full moon in Gemini. I'm sorry, happy full moon in Leo. Bye. Hi, Cancer Rising. This full moon in Leo is happening in your second house. The second house talks about, well, a lot of things. Your self-worth, confidence, money, your values. Um, and as you know, or maybe you don't know, I practice the hermetic laws of the universe, which is as within, so without. So whatever you value, whatever your self-confidence how you feel about yourself and your worth directly impacts your value of money and how you value yourself in turn. So, you know, having Leo in this house is really, again, like what I was saying in the intro is being the main character of your story. How do you see yourself? Do you find yourself um, feeling confident? Do you find like your worth? Are you asking for your worth? And this could be an important turning point for you to realize like maybe you're not asking for enough money. Maybe you're not asking for what you're worth or you haven't set boundaries because cancer is a very, very um, empathic sign. Uh, you are ruled by the moon. So oftentimes one of the downfalls or one of the things that cancers might find themselves in, the situations that they might find themselves in, is um, having to hold their boundaries. Cancers are ruled by the crab, which is, you know, crabs have a hard exoskeleton, but their insides are really soft. So it's sometimes, you know, when cancers get fucked over enough times, they build this barrier against themselves because they don't want to they don't want to be hurt again. And so there's this balance of like uh, having boundaries, but also being open enough to receive. So, um, and I think all of us have that lesson in this lifetime, but you know, Leo is um, a very bold sign. It's, hi, I'm here, I'm ready to be seen. So, um, yes. So let's see what, what messages come through for Cancer Risings. And Venus and Mars are transiting your seventh house of Capricorn. So this is definitely, you know, how you relate to others. Like um, Venus being in your seventh house and Mars is like, yeah, asking for what you want in all areas of your life and not being afraid to get after it. Ooh, that one flew. Okay, exactly. You are the star of your own life. This is Aquarius energy and Aquarius is in your eighth house of um, intimacy, of shared resources. This, is my, this might be a big lesson for you because um, my mom is a Cancer Rising, so I often find her always to be giving and she doesn't necessarily put herself first, um, which is like also the water bear archetype in Aquarius. It's pouring enough for the entire community. But you have the Eight of Pentacles here, which talks about mastery and something that you commit to for the long term. Um, and it's in pentacles, so maybe some of you have started to look into investing, investing in yourself, learning something, 
um, the North Node is in your 11th house in community and your long-term goals and wishes. And the South Node is in Scorpio in creativity and um, which is a Leo house. So I think a lot of you are, are thinking about like your relationship to community and your relationship to others and how you show up and how you are giving and receiving. My advice for Cancer Risings um, with Leo being in your second house, and this is the full moon squaring the nodes, is are you the main character of your story? Are you asking for what you're worth? Are you investing in your growth? Are you investing in yourself first before you give to others? And I know that might be a hard thing for Cancers to do because you're so giving, you're so nurturing, and you're so... Um, selfless sometimes but you can't give if you don't fill your cup up first it's just not possible and i see with all these um eight hands and each hand has a rose it's like when you start investing in yourself and giving to yourself that one rose can turn into like all of this abundance This is, I feel a lot of beautiful energy here. I feel like, and obviously this is a general reading, but I think that a lot of you are going to feel like you're shining, like this, the star card, you're gonna be seen. And the Leo full moon is all about being seen. And if you have some kind of like limiting beliefs about that, this is a time to, to ask why, like, why do you not believe that you are the star? Why, why can't you believe that you are worthy of being seen? Maybe that's the mastery of self. That is like something that you're being called to do at this time. And I don't mean to call you out, but I just feel like some of you want to be, want to be seen, but there's some, as my mom says, limiting believing <laughs> about why. Um, and there's like a whole host of reasons why, but for you, for everybody watching this, it will be different for each of you. But the world wants to see you, so why not? Thank you, Cancer Risings. Happy full moon. Hello, Leo Rising. This full moon is happening in your first house. And wow, I mean, this is your energy, so you should be pretty used to it, right? Being um, on the quest for self of being comfortable in your own skin and the unique gifts that you have to offer this world. Um, I do find it interesting that um, Aquarius, Saturn's in Aquarius, which is opposing this, um, which is opposing this full moon. And I'm wondering like, are you, I think I asked this last month or last moon cycle about your romantic endeavors um i'm just i'm just wondering because that's what's coming through the nine of cups came through which is like i think in the new moon in aquarius i was like um i was feeling very much that leo risings have a deep wish for partnership have a deep wish for commitment and do I know any Leo Risings in my life? I know a lot of Leo Risings, but not intimately like that. But I know that a lot of them have a deep longing for this heart-based soul soulmate connection. Um, and a lot of the like shadow aspects of Leo, because uh, you know, every sign, every archetype has a light and a dark and a feminine and masculine aspect. And I think the, the traits that we often seen with Leos is, you know, the funny kind, which is like the shadow aspects, but I don't find that to be the case with many Leos that I know. Um, and then we have here the Queen of Pentacles. And at the bottom of the deck, we have the Chariot. So there's some wish that you want. There's some wish that you have been wishing on. I don't know how else to say it. There's like a little genie's bottle here. Um, the Nine of Cups talks about something that like that you've 
been wanting, that you've been trying to cultivate here. The Queen of Pentacles is... It could be for financial stability. It could be for, but I'm not feeling it to be financial. I'm, I'm feeling it to be a stable partnership. I don't know why this message keeps coming through. Maybe the Leo Risings who watch this specific video is like on that quest. But with Saturn being in your seventh house is like about commitment. It's about really being serious about partnership and like, this full moon maybe is like your reckoning, your realization of like what that's going to take because everything, everything in spirituality and all of this is how we can take responsibility for our own lives. We can't change other people. We can't make somebody love us. We can't make anybody else do something. It's 100% contingent on our own work of ourselves. And maybe this is you. Maybe this is where you need to be, you need to be stable, creative, abundant, fertile in order for, um, you know, cause like attracts like. So whoever you are attracting, like you have to cultivate this energy first. Please let me know if you're a Leo rising and this is like what's happening in your life because I'm, I'm trying to like feel into like what other messages it could be, but, um, but that's what's coming through. And, and you know, you're a fixed sign. You're a fixed sign. So like being a little bit more mutable, being a little bit more open to what it's going to take to call this in is going to be the mission for you for the next 18 months. You have Scorpio in your fourth house, which is your roots, your family, and ancestry. So releasing a lot of that old karmic, the karmic things that you have come into this life with and then north node being in taurus a lot of you might be um more on the mind of like you know your your career 10th house things but wanting that soul partnership might be in because they're squaring these um houses might be conflicting with your overall career aspirations but i would challenge you to say that maybe it's your limiting beliefs that make you believe you can't have both. You can't have the career and your partner. Um, so to sum it all up, because I said a lot there, I think it's really about you, what you want, what li aligns with your soul, and like feeling more into like this queen of pentacles energy, which is earth energy. It's being grounded, it's being fertile, it's being creative. And check your limiting beliefs about what it's going to take to call in your partner, if that's what you want for this full moon. Okay, thanks Leo Rising. Bye! Hi Virgo Rising. So this full moon in Leo is happening in your 12th house, the quest for spirituality. Um, now, I know a lot of... Um, I know a lot of mutable... mutable rising signs have had it a little rough the last 18 months with the north node being in gemini and the south node being in sagittarius but now i feel like it's more about um in you know the integration of all of the lessons that you've learned to now really rooting down into the physical reality because the north node is in taurus um what it is that you want to create for yourself because the the moon the full moon is in your 12th house of spirituality the hidden realm something that's being released um you know some habits that might not have served you um at this time you might be having some very vivid dreams the north node in taurus is in your ninth house of travel and mastership the south node being in your third house in scorpio which is all about communication and um, short distance travel. So just think about how you as a Virgo rising can be the main character of your story, the star of your story. What it is, what is it that you want to manifest and how can you release some things that are holding you back from showing up um, in your full express self? 
Virgo risings. Virgo is a sign of being of service. Um, oh, excuse me for one second. So page of emotions. This is the page of cups. And I really like the way that this card shows um, the page of cups because there's a portal to the solar plexus and the solar plexus is our fire element. It's where we pump all of our confidence and our willpower. And then another portal is the heart. How can we connect to our heart space, which Leo rules the heart, in order for us to get all of the energy that we need to get forth what it is that we're truly um, wanting. And a page is like new energy, new inspiration, new, new found love for something. And then the 10 of voices. So you've come to a full transformation of some kind of fear, some kind of anxiety that you've been going through. Um, and maybe you felt that during the last, I mean, who hasn't felt that during the panorama, right? Like, I feel like we've all collectively gone through some kind of life transformation. And, you know, for you, it has been around topics of, um, you know, the North Node was in Gemini in your 10th house of career and your South Node in Sagittarius in your 4th house of roots and family. So, you know, like, like I said, every mutable sign has gone through some major, major life shifts. So... Um, I wanted to pull another card for you um, just to see what else this was about and this is the Muse of Emotions which is the King of, of Cups so you go from the Page of Cups to the King of Cups something definitely has triggered your emotional body in terms of like this is what I want and this is what I'm going after. And the more you can you can hone in on the feeling versus seeing it. So when we manifest something, we manifest it we manifest it when our emotions align to the thing that we're wanting. Cuz actually when you manifest something, it's not the physical thing as much as it is the state of being that it, we perceive it will give us, the feeling that it will give us. So whatever this is, whatever you are calling in, and for each of you, it's gonna be different. Allow your fears, allow your anxiety about that. And I know this is easier said than done, but this is the 12th house after all. And some, some of this stuff is not gonna be, um, you're not gonna be able to even like put it into words, but you're coming into like um, a full realization, a full transformation of like whatever it has been holding you back to now like fully accepting that this is what you want and this is what your soul is calling you for you to do. So the more you can get really clear on what that is and meditate on how the feeling will give give you, what the feeling of that thing will give you is how you manifest it in this physical reality. And you have a full moon in Virgo next month in your sign um, in Pisces season. So during Pisces season is a time for you to really, really hone in on like, what is this thing that truly I want and how does it, how does it make me feel and how can I connect to that feeling on the astral realm first? And then the thing with manifestation is, is we have to know that it's happening before we see it, before we see it, which is all the work, right? So anyway, Virgo rising, happy full moon. Bye. Hi, Libra rising. As you can see from my outfit, I am filming this the day after. So it's Monday, February 14th on Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day if any of, any of you celebrate. I usually have to take a break between Virgo and Libra because it's just a lot of energy to do these kinds of um, channeled readings uh, for you. Leo is your 11th house and so this this full moon is happening in your area, your sector of the community, the collective, humanitarianism, but also it represents your long-term goals and desires. 
Scorpio, the South Node in Scorpio is happening in your second house of your resources, of your value, of your money, and the North Node is in your eighth house, which is in Taurus, um, the quest for intimacy and and that axis of Taurus and Scorpio is all about energetic exchange and your resources. And why I bring this up is from the intro, which I shared that this full moon is going to be squaring the nodes of fate. So however you show up, I really believe it is through your heart space. As a Leo, it's ruled by the heart. And that is so important, especially where we're going towards because we don't need leaders anymore to necessarily tell us what to do. Um, we need leaders who lead with the heart, who are conscious, who are trauma-informed, who truly want us to, each individual person in the, in the collective, in the community, to find their own meaning, their own interpretations, and being guided by somebody versus being told what to do. Um, and the word that came through my head was, um, sheeple and and I see these words being thrown a lot in right-wing media and like right-wing influencers but also on the other side um, to the left where both sides are basically saying the same thing this idea of being in the herd or being a sheep and I personally find that there's nothing wrong with being a sheep <laughs> I think they're super cute I, I think that I see it more as, as a hive, as like each individual bee is a necessary component towards the collective, that everybody plays a part in the, the health of the community and it goes awry, it gets distorted when there's one person or many people distorting the facts or or manipulating people because um, we still have Pluto in Capricorn at this at this time and um, Mercury was just conjunct Pluto but so I don't think that there is something wrong with being in a community and being in a herd and being in a hive I just think it goes wrong when a leader is corrupt and wants to control and manipulate people I think we have to work with people because we don't live on islands and we depend on each other. So I really believe Libra Risings, if you've ever wanted to be a leader in some way in a greater community, in a greater collective, this is almost like your, this is like maybe your coming out party or you want to show up in a bigger way. And I think that's really beautiful. Libra, you're a cardinal air sign ruled by Venus. And because you're also ruled by Venus, like Taurus, I really feel like you being in that justice, being in that energy of unconditional love is gonna be really, really important. So I didn't ask a question, but these three cards came out. <laughs> and we have here the Fool, which is ruled by Uranus. So take a leap and the net will appear is always what I hear when I see this, this card. We have strength, which is the Leo card. And number eight always reminds me of power. And I love this full moon here. And the three of emotions, which is all about community and friendship and reunion. And I really like, I really see this for you. If any of you have felt like you wanted to lead. Um, and something that I asked in the beginning of this video is really is really in alignment with Leo energy, which is how are you the main character of your story? And are there ways in which you have dimmed your own light in, in an attempt to have acceptance from others? And this is your time to be that leader. We have two major arcana here, which is a major shift, which is a major, you know, um, maybe upgrade from where you were. Maybe you were playing in the background. Maybe you were just observing. Maybe you were one of the people who was afraid to step up. But with Jupiter going into your seventh house um, in May, I think this is a really great time to expand your sense of independence and expand your sense of being seen 
because um, Libras love to collaborate and Libras love to be in a partnership of any kind, um, not just romantic. This is really beautiful, Libra rising. Um, let me know in the comments what you're going through, if this is in alignment with what's happening currently for you, and happy full moon! My dear Scorpio risings, Leo is your 10th house, and as I've mentioned with every fixed rising sign, so Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius, this is your time. This is your... <laughs> next 18 months to step up into your big unfolding and with the south node moving through your first house of self of your identity this is your time if there was ever a time to truly truly examine in what ways have my perceptions of myself and my role in the greater collective have they been maybe not true i watched this amazing tiktok today and I don't even remember the name of the creator. Um, she was a white woman and she was basically talking about how um, with like critical race theory being banned and like how for a lot of white folks, white bodied folks, it's it takes great self examination on the root of everything. And, and that's why I love astrology and that's why I love healing work is we need to know what we're changing. We need to know why we're healing we need to know first of all like what we're mo moving towards but we won't know that until we understand the roots of everything and for a lot of us we don't necessarily want to do that work first because it can be painful and the things that we find um, are directly linked to our own thoughts and behaviors and so um, but what I find liberating about that whole process is that we do have the power to change our lives and we do have the power to change the collective and the work that I do is to help you and help everybody realize that at an individual level and then at an individual level when you do that you help um, create a shift in the collective and so for you I really believe the south node being in your first house and Leo being your tenth house um, Leo is the highest point of your chart so this is your career, your legacy. And for those of you who don't resonate with the idea of a career, this is like the what you want to leave behind for future generations. So even if you if you just want to be a mother or father, not just want to be, but you know what I mean, like um, that's like your life goal, then that's perfectly fine. But in this quest for shining bright as like you know having leo in your 10th house is like being seen um in some aspect of your career and being that authority and being led by the heart space um in which ways are you holding yourself back from old karmic programming or old thought patterns because um i love this um tick not han quote which is with no mud there's no lotus and I find the lotus to be the it, Taurus, like what you see visibly, and then the mud and the roots is Scorpio. So we cannot, we cannot detach the roots from the flower, and we cannot see the flower without the roots, without like truly understanding like the roots of who we are. Um, so that is a very big message that's coming from um, out for you. So let's see, what do you have to know? And it's interesting that Valentine's Day is a holiday, I guess you can call it, based on a Roman saint, Saint Valentine. And, you know, a lot of people aren't Christian. <laughs> Not a lot of people practice Catholicism, but with everything else, it's become this holiday that is very much based in capitalism and showing love at such a showing love at such a very surface level like let me buy you flowers and buy you chocolates but Scorpios are like so much more than that because Scorpios are all about like deep intimacy and truly knowing somebody at the base at the base level of who they are 
Um, so the first card we have here is the Queen of Swords, and this is the energy that I've been kind of tapping into, which is, and the tarot cards just do that. They basically just confirm what I've been saying through your chart, which is like seeing through the truth and being a little bit emotionally detached from it, not in a bad way, not in a shadow side of like bypassing, but just truly looking at yourself with like, Try not to hold any kind of judgment with the way that you look at yourself and just coming to the truth of who you are, who you want to be, um, because that's the only way we're going to know like what our soul is calling for us to do, our true essence. Leo is a fixed fire sign. And there are just some things within our soul that are fixed that cannot be changed. And you want to know what that is. And then you have the chariot which is a cancer card. It's all about moving forward. And I love how there's like this light coming out from her solar plexus. It's like truly knowing who you are at a very base level and moving forward with all of your steam, all of your energy. And just from my personal experience from having the South Node in my first house, um, and I've said this in many videos before, um, that it's not about just releasing it's not just about releasing. It's not just about, yes, it is a component of the South Node moving through your first house, but what I've experienced the last 18 months has been truly spiritually transformational. It was like um, almost like an upgrade in my understanding of, about myself and my role in the bigger collective and why I'm here in the first place. And if you watch my videos, if you followed me, before this transit, so before May of 2020, you'll notice a huge difference in how I speak and how I present myself on the topics that I speak about because I myself feel like I'm a completely different person. Um, you know, I'm the same, but just different. Same, same, but different, but always going back to closer to my soul. And that's the whole point of healing. That's the whole point of transformation is to become closer to your soul and letting go of the programming that we were taught. So I hope that helped you, Scorpio Rising. I'm here for you every step of the way. Happy full moon in Leo. Bye! Happy full moon in Leo, fellow Saggy Risings. You know you hold a pla special place in my heart because I am also a fellow Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter. And this full moon in Leo is happening in our ninth house of mastery, of travel. And maybe I'm projecting my own experiences onto fellow Sag Risings, but I feel like a lot of us are, a lot of you, including myself, are starting to feel the momentum of, of forward movement. And I think, I think all, all signs are, but specifically the mutable signs, because we've been kind of held into this, um, spiritual vortex is like how I like to explain it. But um, now is the time to go through the rebirth process of the tr of the transformation process of the lessons that we learned in the past 18 months with the South Node moving through our first house. And so Leo being at the top of our chart in the ninth house, it's like we've learned stuff. We've learned lessons. We've learned things about ourselves. And now is the time to either share that knowledge um, go on a pilgrimage or learn something even more to help elevate ourselves in this, um, in whatever needs to happen in the next 18 months with the North Node in our sixth house and the South Node being in our 12th house. And I don't know about you, Sag Risings, but I'm just super excited for all of what's to come in 2022 just because I know for a lot of us it's been really difficult and I'm just personally super excited and I already feel the momentum of this energy um, coming through for us. So let's see what spirit has to say. And we, even though we still have a lot of um, planets in our second house in Capricorn, which has been restructuring our sense of confidence, value, our money, um, I think a lot of us have learned lessons about just being more like adulting, I would say. At least that's what I took away from all this Capricorn energy the last couple of years. 
And speaking of Capricorn, the first card to come out is the devil. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we have the devil and the muse of inspirations, which is the king of wands, which is like our energy. So exactly what I was feeling, I feel like if I could just get a little spiritual here for a moment, you know, the, the South Node being in our first house, for me personally, I experienced it as a spiritual up-leveling. Um, and everything happens at the energetic spiritual level first, and then through the astral realm, it, it's attached to our physical experience. And w which is why it's so important for us to go through these transits, because certain certain belief systems, certain ways of looking at this world were outdated and it needed to be broken down through Pluto and Capricorn and all of the Capricornian content, right? We need to we needed to detach from the karmic lessons and the attachments that we were setting against ourselves. Personally for me that had a lot to do with tradition. It had a lot to do with money and my belief systems around money, around work, about attaching my worth and my value to work and how much money and how much work I was doing. And truly like, I mean, the way I see money, the way I see relationships, the way I value myself is just has completely transformed. And so out of that transit, now the full moon in Leo, this is also like this is a fire card, so it's coming out being like a fucking boss. And our Leo house in the ninth house is trying to um, our first house in Sagittarius. So just look at where you have 27 degrees of um, any Sag placements. I personally have Neptune there. So this full moon is trying my Neptune in my first house. Um, which is probably why I'm getting all these like crazy dreams and crazy visions. But this is our time to shine and this is our time to share with the world what we've learned, um, how we've been moving through these last 18 months in such a big way, you know, like having having such a, I would say, dark night of the soul moment with Sagittarius in our first house. Um, and I think I said it to Scorpio rising group. It wasn't about releasing uh, Per se like everything right? I don't see the North and South node as being like more of this and less of this. It's like It's integrating everything. It's coming to the middle. It's it's integrating the polarity and duality within ourselves It's being able to hold both what we have learned in the past and where we want to go in the future and where we're going in the future is being a visionary. The king of inspiration is a visionary and can see through spirit. Fire is a spirit sign. Seeing through spirit and being the original channelers of spirit energy towards the collective. Um, having Leo in the ninth house is being like that heart-based leader, that heart-based teacher, that heart-based philosopher. So anyway, Sag Risings, there's no real... No, there's no planets right now in Sagittarius. So it really is this time for us to like, you know, integrate everything that we've learned and really now like start rebuilding and coming through our rebirth process and coming onto ground. And um, with the North Node being in Taurus in our sixth house, finding daily habits, rituals, health pat health, um, habits to support um everything that we've learned so far so happy full moon sag risings and see you next next full moon new moon i'm sorry bye hello capricorn rising how are you all doing how are you liking pluto in your first house <laughs> and you have mars and venus in your first house like as ever, I've been saying this for ever since I started doing these Capricorn Risings. I have a very soft spot for you because of all the Capricorn energies going through your sense of self. Um, but not talking about just Capricorn energy, Leo. This Leo full moon is happening in your eighth house. The eighth house is all about intimacy. It's all about shared resources. It's like the house where... 
it's very psychological. It's the things that we, we think about as taboo in our society. So like death, taxes, sex, the occult. Um, and having it in Leo is such an interesting um, energy because because it's 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 a Scorpio house, right? Which talks about like the hidden realm. It's not something that you necessarily talk about. It's like our base level feeling. But Leo is like you shine, you're radiated by the sun, you want to be seen and you want to be heard. So I think this is like every Capricorn rising's quest for some kind of deep intimate connection. Um and really leaning into your heart space about that. Like, what are you calling in? What kind of energies do you want to experience? Um, you could be calling in a Cancer or a Leo since Cancer rules your seventh house. Um, but with, you know, Venus and Mars transiting your first house, you're really thinking about like, what, did it, what is it that I want and how can I get it? And how can I get there? So let's ask for advice or anything else for Capricorn rising. And the North Node's in your fifth house. So you are on a quest for more romance, more fun, more creativity, more playfulness. So um, Capricorn, you're ruled by Saturn, which isn't the most like, it's not the most like hot sign, you know, but I feel like, I feel like after all the ups and downs that you've been experiencing that this year, 2020 and 2023, you're going to want to have a little bit more fun. You're going to want to call that in. Oh, I thought a, a card just flipped over, but maybe it didn't. So really lean into that. Really lean into fellow earth sign Taurus here for some pleasure. And... Um, you know, Capricorn isn't a sign that like spends money, which is good. That's very practical. But at least see and lean into like that fiery Leo energy. Like what really turns you on? Ooh, here we go. Muse of, in Muse of emotions, which is the king of cups. Mm-hmm. I was expecting. I was suspecting. <laughs> I was suspecting calling in some kind of deep emotional, um, something deep and emotional, whether it's through creativity, whether it's through passion, whether it's through a romance or partnership or intimacy. Um, really lean into like what your heart is calling for you to do what does your heart truly desire and don't be afraid to actually express it in whatever medium um in whatever medium you think that it needs to come through in so like if you feel um if you feel because the five of wands came out which talks about passion the fire that lights you up right this is a leo card it's something that you feel like it's the number five so something needs to change and a way that you can express this energy instead of projecting it or having some kind of apathetic energy around it like um let's say you're calling in a partner and you're not seeing this partner, instead of projecting that or waiting around, you can channel this energy, the five of wands, and this longing feeling towards something creative, like art, like dance, like music. You have to be able to channel this energy so that it doesn't become stuck, so that you can be in the flow. And manifestation is all about being in the flow, of being receptive. Um, so we have the five of pentacles and the five of wands, two fives. So something is changing. The five of pentacles talks about, this is the five of materials, um, scarcity mindset. So some of you, if you're worried about like money or finances and, you know, Capricorn, um, Capricorns are achievement based signs, um, in the old 
capitalistic paradigm. I don't personally think Capricorn is like that. Capricorn to me is a yin sign. It's more about the elder, it's being wise. But in our old paradigm, um, if you have any qualms about this, um, underneath the deck is the Six of Wands. This is a, another Leo card. So there is some Leo energy here about tapping into that fire energy, tapping into that heart-based passion and really using that to channel some old belief systems about what it's going to take, um, your resources. You know, this is the eighth house. So whatever you need to do to heal your scarcity mindset and channel these energies through a creative project is what is being called for you right now. Happy full moon in Leo, Capricorn Risings. Hi Aquarius Risings, we just had the new moon in your first house and now we have the full moon in your opposite house in the seventh house. And that is one-on-one -on -one partnerships um, of any kind, it doesn't have to be just romantical. It can be with um, friendships, it can be with your family members, um, but it is your one-on-one -on -one partnerships. So um, if Aquarius Risings have been trying to call in a partnership or a deeper relationship, deeper connections with your current relationships, this is a great full moon to attune yourself into those energies. You're the last fixed rising sign that I have to talk to. And I've been saying this to Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and now you, that this is your time the next 18 months to really enact some changes, both mentally, physical, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, because the fixed rising signs have the north and south node in Scorpio and Taurus, which are fixed signs, and these are hitting your angular houses. Very, very, um, very, very important houses in the astro astrological wheel. Um, your north node is in Taurus in the fourth house, which is your roots and your family, and the south node in Scorpio in your in your tenth house of career. So um, it's interesting because the first two cards that came out was the Ace of Swords and the Emperor. It's hard for me, I really tried throughout each of the readings to keep it just about the Leo full moon, but like these full moons don't happen in a vacuum. Like each thing that happens in the sky informs the other. And so um, it's really hard for me to just talk about the Leo full moon. And <laughs> this is like an example of that because Aquarius risings, you're being asked to to see things in a different way the ace of swords to me when i see this card with her colorful colorful hair and this light coming out of her head and the owl is like trusting your inner wisdom and the downloads that you get you're aquarius rising and aquarius is ruled by both saturn and uranus you're the you're the sign that thinks outside the box and you have to trust that because aquarius placements specifically aquarius you know, personal planets and risings are the people who are going to be moving our collective forward with your wild, innovative ideas. Aquariuses usually find themselves in the outskirts of like what's normal, of what's traditional, but because of that, they have all kinds of amazing ideas, Some sometimes radical, sometimes it could go in the shadow side, but nonetheless, these ideas help push the collective forward. And with that, you become this leader. This is an Aries card. And Leo in your seventh house is, I'm assuming, you know, in your relationships, you... <sighs> Sometimes I think like, because I have my moon and Venus in Aquarius. And oftentimes people mistake Aquarians for being not emotional and emotionally being detached. But I think that is a that is a very actually helpful 
trait to have when you are dealing with different kinds of energies and different kinds of people. And when you're trying to move a collective forward towards revolution and revelation, you can't be offended by what people say about you. And also when you know that people around you aren't, um, aren't for your highest good and aren't for your, you know, like the upliftment of yourself is when I feel the Aquarian detachment, emotional detachment comes very handy. And so I think you're being called to be a leader. You're being called to be um, the emperor, the Aries energy within your relationships and also just in general for the next couple of, um, you know, 18 months because again, I think you are really being called to share your ideas in like a bigger way. This is an opportunity from spirit. Every ace is. And I don't know why it's the Leo full moon that like this is coming through more specifically for you, but but it is. And like like I said, um, as a fixed fixed um, rising sign, these all of these eclipses, all of these um, major major lunations and movements in the sky are hitting your your angular houses, your first house, your fourth, seventh, and tenth. Like these are major life shifts. So anyway, Aquarius Risings, I hope you have a beautiful full moon in Leo and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, Pisces Rising. You are last but certainly not least um, my favorite sign. One of my favorite signs. Um, you are having this full moon in your sixth house which is all about your daily habits rituals health work co-workers um it's the house of being of service it's normally a virgo house but you have it in leo so it's somehow your daily habits your daily work routines your rituals will help support you in how you're being of service and something that i always tell pisces placements in general is to um, make sure that you are taking care of yourself first um, before you extend yourself to other people. So let's see what this full moon um, has in store for you here. Pisces rising. How does it feel to have Jupiter in your first house? Are you feeling that energy? Okay, so the first card we have is the Knight of Materials. Okay. Slow movement, slow build up. Then we have the seven of materials. Okay, there is something here about you wanting to accomplish something um, that maybe has been taking longer than you have it you have anticipated. Whether whether it has to do with literal work or finances or money or financial stability, something is taking longer than you, Pisces rising. Um, I'm feeling a little bit of where, where the fuck is this? Like what's happening? Why is this taking so long? My answer for this is always the same, regardless of transit, regardless of anything that's happening in life is that sometimes when we are attuned to looking at life in a certain perspective, that we actually forget to see the miracles. So for example, we are so attuned to our way of thinking all the time that we see this world in terms of this linear 3D paradigm of like um, either things happen really slowly or things are taking too long or because we live in the 3D reality and things do happen slowly, more slowly in our physical embodiment than they do in our mind or in our vision. But when we can attune ourselves into a different frequency and in a different perspective of looking at things, we might miss, we might miss the miracle that's just right in front of us. So the one thing that I can say, for example, is like, um, that common theme in like romantic comedies when the girl or the guy is like looking for their soulmate or looking for their person and they're so keen and so 
um, like fixated on them looking a certain way or having a certain kind of job that they miss the very person that they that they love right in front of them it's, it's usually like their friend or a neighbor or somebody that's right in front of them but that because they have this fixated idea of what it's supposed to look like they miss the person right in front of them that's what i'm trying to say it actually might just be an illusion that it's taking so long but the th you might miss the miracles, you might miss the thing because you're attuned to something else. You have this very fixated idea of what it's supposed to look like or how it's supposed to come, but, but how things are supposed to look and how they're supposed to come is not up to us. We just have to tune into the frequency because the bottom deck energy is the ace of emotions, which is an offering of spirit of some emotional, emotional thing. And you're a Pisces rising, so, you're already attuned to this energy of like tapping into your emotion. This is not something that you can see. It's not something that you can necessarily rationalize. It's something that you feel. So what you're being asked to do, and I know this might not have anything to do with the full moon in Leo, but it does because moons, full moons talk about our emotional body. It's tuning into your emotions and how you want to feel versus what it looks like. Because when you do that, it comes faster. Everything happens at the emotional level and we manifest based on that, based on our vibration versus like what we want. We manifest who we are, not what we want. So I hope that helped Pisces Rising. Happy full moon!